Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Sunday, the 18th of September. Now, we're looking at excess deaths today. This is a phenomenon all over the world at the moment. And what prompted me to do this is the European Union has just published data showing that deaths are 16% higher than we would expect. And the vast majority of these are not COVID deaths. So we've got a great increase in non-COVID deaths. So that's what we'll be looking at from the European Union. And we'll see that this is the case in many countries around the world. Now, the UK latest excess, uh, excess death data updated on the 16th of September. Data for the week ending the 2nd of September. 350 deaths involved COVID. That's, uh, it was 505 the week before. So that's continuing to go down, which is good news. Total number of deaths registered in the UK, just over 10,000, but 7.4% above the five-year average. More people are dying than we would expect. This, this equates to 706 excess deaths in the United Kingdom. And deaths involving COVID-19 account for 3.4% of all excess deaths. So we see there's a large number of excess deaths that cannot be attributed to COVID. What is causing these deaths? And uh, we're not really seeing that much discussion of this. That's why I'm very keen to keep this topic uh, in people's minds, because we really do need answers on this one. Now, this is excess mortality here. Now, I know, I know you won't be able to see this very well um, at all, but... Um, I'm going to blow it up for you, but it shows Mexico's worst. But the, the, these accumulative uh, excess deaths, of course, um, most of these are COVID. And if I just show you the order of uh, COVID uh, or total excess deaths, many of which are COVID, as we've said, is here. Mexico did very badly in the pandemic. Then the United States, Italy, Greece, Spain, United Kingdom, Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. So that's total excess deaths, uh, many of which are COVID. But if we look at the deaths that are current at the moment, most of these are not. The vast majority of these, as we've seen, are not COVID deaths. And here we see that figure, that these figures here. Um, so, for example, the United States is on about 12% at the moment. But again, we'll look at these in a bit of a blow up so we can see them in order. Ireland, the United Kingdom, Australia, the United States, New Zealand, Canada, all with uh, excess deaths, although the Canadian data is a bit uh, non-existent actually on uh, our world in data at least so the european report excess mortality hits 16 percent highest value in 2022 so far this is from eurostat all, all the all the data is there dated updated on the 16th of september data for july now this is the graphic they give so um the, the these darker colored here uh, the, these are the uh, 10 to 15 percent and the lighter colored uh, lower percentages now, I know it's a bit hard to see the graph, so I'm going to kind of spill, uh, spell these out a bit. Just before we do that, we notice that these are excess deaths here. Now, we would expect these to be high because of the waves of the pandemic, but we wouldn't expect it to be high now. So we're seeing high levels of non-COVID deaths in the European Union as well as the UK. Now, here's the actual figures. It climbed to 16% in July 2022, all of the European Union. So very high excess deaths, 16% more than we would expect. Uh, now, in June, it was 7% higher, and in May, it was 7% higher. So now it's more than doubled. The excess deaths are going up. And um, let's hope this trend doesn't continue. We say, of course, we don't know if it's going to continue or not. We hope it won't, but we don't have data to give us a, a, an answer on that yet. Now, July additional deaths... Um, this increase of 16% in the European Union equals 53,000 additional deaths just in the month of July. So 53,000 additional people, more than we would expect. And not only that, the European data is very good because it's actually compared with uh, pre-pandemic levels um, between 2016 and 2019. So 16% above what we had at pre-pandemic levels for non-COVID related deaths at the moment. There's something really quite significant going on in the world here at the moment. So what are the factors? Well, uh, post-COVID infection, there could be complications of previous COVID infection, the sequelae. We know these exist, particularly thromboembolic sequelae. We know these complications exist. Post-lockdown effects, social, psychological, psychiatric effects, of course. 
reluctance to access health during the pandemic, delayed diagnosis. And what we can't rule out in Europe as well, of course, is there's been significant heat waves. And we know that heat waves do increase um, overall deaths. So that is a factor as well in the European data and perhaps even in the UK data. So let's look at these figures now for specific European countries. Spain, 37% more deaths than we would expect in July, based on the average from 2016 to 2019. This is a very significant increase. And as we've said, the vast majority of these are non-COVID attributable deaths. Cyprus, I think it was about 35. I haven't put the figure in there. Greece 31, Portugal 28.8, Switzerland 25.9% above the average that we would expect. Italy 24.9%, Austria 17, Slovenia 16, Ireland 16, um, Germany 15.2, Norway 14.8, Netherlands 14.7, Croatia, France, Estonia, Luxembourg, uh, Denmark 10.3% more deaths than we would expect and only the small Balkan country of, uh, not Balkan country, the small uh, Baltic country of um, of uh, Latvia with um, actually lower deaths. So we're seeing huge numbers of excess deaths across Europe. This is not an isolated phenomena. Now, Europe doesn't really tell us much about the age groups, but the UK data does. So in the UK, 0 to 24s, this is the graphic here. Now, the dotted line here is what we would expect. Uh, the, the, dark, uh, the dark part there is COVID deaths. So this grey part is non-COVID deaths here. So we see an excess of non-COVID deaths in the 0 to 24 year old age, age group. Now, thankfully, this line's fairly low. This level here is about 100 in this group, but we're still seeing excess deaths. Going on to the 25 to 49 year old age group. Well, again, we're seeing the figures above the dotted line. And this level here in the 25 to 49 is around about 400 uh, deaths per week at that level. But we're still seeing these excess deaths. Um, the 50 to 64, again, well above the dotted line. And here we see the grey is non-COVID, only the, uh, the yellowish colour there is COVID. And in, again, this line here represents around about 1,000 deaths uh, per week. And the 85 plus is um, this line here represents about four and a half thousand. So we do see there is a disproportionate amount of deaths in older people, of course. But again, we see it above the average line. Now, um, causes of non-COVID excess deaths have been given in the UK. Now, the causes of a disease or death, we can have proximal causes, which is like the immediate cause. Um, so, for example, if someone has a heart attack, we might say they had an acute ventricular fibrillation. That's the proximal cause. But the distal cause is the disease which causes the heart to go into arrest, the coronary artery clogging up the atherosclerosis. So these are proximal causes. These are the immediate causes of death. Um, so ischemic heart disease is a proximal cause. People died through not enough blood supply to the heart muscle. Cerebrovascular disease, that's things like strokes, the blood supply to the brain, other circulatory diseases. Heart failure, there was a significant increase. Cancers, acute respiratory, chronic respiratory diseases, urinary, cirrhosis, which is scarring of the liver, diabetes and Parkinson's disease. So we see an increase in deaths from all of these causes. But of course, that doesn't tell us what caused the urinary problem, what caused the cirrhosis, what caused the acute respiratory condition. That's just the immediate cause of death. So, yes, it, it's useful that this data has been collected, but we need to go a bit further back, really, and find out what is leading to that. And we did look at some possible causes uh, on that before. So that's the end of this video. Um, the next part is, is unrelated. It's about me. I've had many uh, questions about uh, my current standing on YouTube. Uh, now, unfortunately, I worded things badly and um, got a, a warning on, on my channel, which is really quite serious because if I get another one, I'll get a, uh, I'll get a suspension. I'll get a YouTube strike and I certainly don't want that because I've got so much other useful information uh, that nurses and doctors around the world are, are using on YouTube and uh, that would be... Um, 
quite unfortunate. I've actually been working, uh, well, I'm actually working in Africa at the moment and I've talked to quite a few people who have been using my videos, all the anatomy and physiology videos, um, all the disease videos uh, for, for their nursing, medical officer and uh, medical training. So it would be quite tragic to use that. So I have to be really careful. So so that, that's my current um, status at the moment. So I'm in a bit of a precarious situation. I, I, um, I, I worded things rather clumsily when I was talking about uh, COVID vaccines. So let's just clarify the position on this now. Um, this is the YouTube uh, guidelines here. Uh, vaccine. Vaccine safety, content uh, alleging that vaccines cause chronic side effects outside of rare side effects that are recognised by other health authorities. So can we be quite clear on this video? I'm not saying that vaccines are causing any side effects outside of those recognised. Uh, rare side effects are recognised by the health authority. So we're being very careful to abide by YouTube uh, guidelines here. And YouTube helpfully gives us additional information, additional resources that we can use, um, and I'm going to post these links here. These are direct from YouTube, so very useful. Uh, we see that YouTube um, recommends that we visit um, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, European Vaccine Information Portal, National Health Service, World Health and Organization Vaccine Safety. So all the direct links are there for your perusal. Um, if you would like to uh, click on those for uh, definitive uh, information. Um, now, also on Google support here from YouTube, claims about COVID-19 vaccines that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or the WHO. So I'm being very careful not to contradict anything that the WHO is saying in their, in their wisdom uh, about, uh, about vaccination. So uh, hopefully we're abiding by that. Claims that an approved COVID vaccine will cause death, infertility, miscarriage, autism, or, or uh, contraction of other infectious diseases. Well, I'm certainly not claiming that uh, um, an approved vaccine will cause death, infertility, miscarriage, or any such uh, thing. So that just clarifies uh, my position, really. And um, it, 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 is, um, it is a bit of a delicate one because um, I really don't want to get the channel taken off but that, that's my current status there for all you of you that have currently uh, have currently been kind enough to uh, ask now i'm going to leave the last word on this video to um to julie who's made a comment that i thought at funny was at first was a bit funny but in actual fact it's deadly serious um uh, julie says this and there's the reference let me get this straight almost a sense of incredulity there um, in the United States, they collect sexual orientation data, but not whether they had vaccine or no vaccine in regards to a study on long COVID. Fair point, uh, because, of course, the vaccines could be uh, could be protective against long COVID. So it's right that Julia uh, says this. Um, this is the strangest thing ever. I know gender identity is all the rage right now, but really? Sexual orientation, a survey question, but not vaccine status. Not to mention vaccine status prior to infection or after infection. So you're quite right, Julie. It would be really nice to have all this information on vaccine status, whether people were vaccinated then had the infection or whether people had the infection then were vaccinated and collect all that data. Unfortunately, the CDC doesn't agree with us, Julie, so we haven't got that information. Um, so there we are. That's today's video. Um, really let, let, let's hope these excess deaths stop going up because at the moment 16 percent in the uk um no sorry 16 percent in the european union 7.5 percent in the um 7.5 percent in the uk excess more than we would expect and the united states figure i'm just, I'm just wanted to kind of check it out here it, the, the data is not that good but it looked uh, we, this is what we looked at uh here from the United States um, you can't see that but it looks like it's around about 12% uh, so um, excess deaths everywhere we need to know why this is um, let's hope this doesn't get uh, any worse really and thank you for watching